things like the Jace, the Rise, have been rising in popularity as a form of answer. And already banned out by SK, so they anticipated getting that Aatrox first and said, well, we'll get rid of some of the counters in this But there's lane. also the cannon. There is <laughs> also the cannon. We saw how effective that was in the last game. And Alfari, I'm sure, will want to prove himself as one of the better EU He's top laners. He's definitely been struggling he definitely over the been last struggling. two weeks. A lot of solo deaths. Very uncharacteristic of him. Uh, of him. I was hyping him up a lot coming into the split. I feel like he had a really solid 2018 year, even though Misfits really struggled. But so far on Origin, he hasn't really been able to live up for the hype that I built for him. Uh, we'll see if he can change that around, as we are expecting him to be on the cannon this time around. And uh, unsurprisingly, Selfmade going to put a lot of high value on this Sejuani, something that uh, he had fantastic success with against Fnatic when he landed all those great yep. ultimates onto Reckless. And they're going to follow that up with an Ezreal as well. And Ezreal, I think, is one of those champions that more and more teams are realizing how powerful he is. For a while, I thought he was one of those champions that, you know, you get Triforce, you get like one or two items, and then he falls off. But he actually scales extremely well into the late game, going for things like the Seraph along with yep. the... Um, the man of Mune as well, and you actually build a little bit more AP towards the late game, means that you hit like a truck thanks to the changes to his W. So Ooh. definitely a very strong AD carry right now in the meta. Big fan of this Callista pick to answer it though. Alongside the really? Alistair, I love Callista. I think Callista Alistair or Callista Thrash are some of the best aggressive bottom lanes in the league at the moment. And I like it because we haven't seen Patrick play it yet. And I've always looked at Patrick as this guy that can excel, but hasn't quite had the opportunity to do it yet. So I'm hoping this game is that chance. The problem I have with Callista is she did receive some changes not too long ago. Um, and one of the biggest things that I remember was that her damage to monsters, I believe got cut in half on the rent, which means that one of her greatest assets of being able to threaten things like the Baron in the mid game is gone. Because you've got to remember that Kalista is one of those champions that does fall off in the late game. You don't really build crit on her. Her strongest points are during the laning phase and in the mid game. So typically what you do is you build a lead, then you go to Baron at like the 25 minute mark, and then you can rush it down because, well, hey, you're Kalista. But now that that's much weaker, I just feel like her identity as a champion is much less obvious than what it used to be. I agree with that. She did also, though, get base damage and scaling damage buffs on that 9.1 patch where they reduced the epic monster damage to 50%. So she is just, in terms of skirmishing, in terms of team fighting, she will have more damage earlier on in the game. It's only slight, but maybe that's enough for Origin to get their second win of the LEC. Bans coming out in the second phase, then Morgana Victor taken away by Origin. LeBlanc and a missed ban slash null ban here from SK Gaming. I'll make sure with our producers exactly why that's happened. So, uh, clearly what uh, Origin are doing right now in terms of their draft is they've tried to get themselves a strong bot side of the map. The cannon into the Aatrox is ideally what they're expecting towards the top side, so they have two winning matchups. Ooh. They're also going to run the Kane into Sejuani, and this was a jungler that we've been seeing a lot over in both the LCK and LPL. I say a lot, has been kind of rising in popularity, has been showing his face a little bit more because uh, against Sejuani, you can't really get punished for your weak early game, which means you can farm, get to that red game state where you are a monster in the mid to late game. You're extremely tanky, you have a huge amount of sustain, you're very disruptive in team fights, and uh, you can be very powerful, but only once you've gotten that evolution. We're looking to see how quickly that Rast can come out. That was an intended misban from SK. They didn't lock in a ban in time. They will pick the Vladimir. Uh, assume that Pyrian will be taking that in the mid lane. Of course, could go up to Whirlab in the top. Still a little bit of flexibility there. And now they need to round it out with the support. I like Braum. Braum is a strong pick. Works well. Braum is a good support. Yeah, very solid, very all-rounded. He doesn't have the best roaming, which is what I think you should try to pair up with uh, uh, Anes because of how good he is in the 2v1. But I guess they want a little bit more defensive power considering they're going up against a uh, Callista Alistair. It's also really good follow-up on things like the Sejuani engage. But you can see that SK have actually got a very solid team fight comp. I think they've got really good scaling with the Vladimir and the Ezreal. And they've also got a pretty solid mid-game spike too. So I think they're kind of playing towards their strengths that we've seen a lot from them. Whereas Origin are just going very much towards trying to win lane. They've got a lot of strong side lanes. They have decent scaling with the Yasuo and with the Kane as well, but I do think they're a little reliant on getting ahead during the laning phase, given that they have picked the Cannon uh, towards the top side of the map, and they also have picked the Callista and the Alistair as well. 
actually really interested to see this Yasuo pick as well. It seems like a much more aggressive draft coming out from Origin. Want to do more in the lanes. Cold needs to be ganking, needs to be getting into skirmishes to get towards that evolution, towards uh, the Rust. I mean, I'll be honest though, Medic, like, this draft from Origin, the, the win condition doesn't seem abundantly clear to me because it feels like they've got a mix of everything in here. Okay. They've got strong bot side of the map. They have like good scaling with the Yasuo. Like they have decent team fighting, but you kind of want to have the Yasuo playing off on a side lane a little bit more. Like I guess the argument could be made that they want to just try and force fights in the mid game. Their AOE is pretty effective with Callista Cannon, uh, with the Alistar acting as their front line. And if you have all the disruption from a cane, it can be pretty uh, effective. But I also think that they're kind of relying on the fact that the cane can free farm Yasuo in theory. They, they clearly believe it's a good matchup into the Aatrox and they're happy to pick it. Um, and so that they're hoping that they can just get that free scaling and get to a point where they can have through items and out damage. So I'm interested to see how this origin composition works. It's definitely quite unique, not what I would expect. Um, but the SK comp seems very more classic. It's very straightforward, team fight, yep. good scaling, have a solid mid game, have a good late game. And again, our eyes will be falling onto self made to see how much of an impact he can have until the early main phase. Will he gank top? And then afterwards, will he gank bot? Those are the important questions when you watch self made because that's exactly what he does. Every single game, without fail, pretty much. We're going to jump onto the summons. Let's track the junglers, then, yeah. Medic. Let's see what they're up to. Let's look at them. self made At Where the moment, oh, self made He's in the mid lane. Right. He's on the new okay, skin. Okay, we're a little early. Mm -hmm. He is running the new skin, yes. Um, but it's a little early. Look at that porky boy. <laughs> like one person in the crowd just giggled at that. Um, it's not my favorite Sejuani skin, though. No? I like the, uh, I think it's Battlecast. The, Is it uh, Battlecast Sejuani skin? The one where she rides a bear. Oh, that's um, like the Northern Tundra yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Miffy getting the cowbell in a, Do you want to sing along? He's, no. giving, he's giving you a beat, Betty. <laughs> no, well, the cast hasn't gone goofy enough for that just yet. No. Okay, so junglers, where are they going to go? Selfmate does always go top. Yes, That's so always his first game. You'd expect him to start bot side. That's exactly what he's doing. Well, Cole is, is starting top side. Careful, he's grouping up with Dreams and Crown Shot. Uh, they may be looking for a delayed invade here, but it actually looks like Cold. Where is he, Path? He's putting a ward in the river, and it looks like he's going to do Solar Raptors into red. So he's going to do a more conventional jungle start with the cane because of how strong he is. And SK, they're going to go away in the for blue. an invade. This is a really nice invade. Uh, look, obviously, uh, Braum said one is oh. a powerful level one as well. So what SK are actually doing here is they're splitting the map. This is something that XL did back in week one. And the reason why you do this is because it allows your jungler to play towards one side of the map, whereas the other jungler is forced on the other side of the map. So Origin should have full information, given the fact that Crown Shot and Dreams have just walked through the river, the self-made just stole his blue. This means that Cold will go from his top side red into the enemy top side blue. And while this will force Warden to play defensively, it means that Patrick and Mithy have to don't have jungle support. So we'll see uh, what they try and do with this. You can Typically, Patrick and Mithy will try to play more on the defensive side. They have to respect the fact that there is a jungler towards the bottom half of the map, but they're trying to rush that level two and mitigate the risk of a gank, um, because if Patrick and Mithy are already at that level two state, then it obviously becomes a lot harder to gank them. It definitely does. Now, I do want to actually look at Cold quite a lot uh, in this early game, because up until now, what we've seen from Cold is not aggressive jungler. He doesn't force skirmishes, he doesn't tend to force fights that much. He actually has very low jungle proximity with his team as well, doesn't spend that much time near his laners. And you can't really do that that much on a cane, because you need to be picking up those soul shards. You need to be getting towards that transformation. So I wonder if we're going to see Cold be just a little bit more proactive in this game than we usually uh, see from him. I mean, so typically on cane, uh, no, <laughs> it's the answer because you just want to fight. This is actually really interesting from Selfmade. He's actually going to go back towards his blue, and he's going to try and contest this. He does have the smite, smite available. Fight. Selfmade has the burst. Cold jumps in. Smite comes out from Selfmade. He secures it, and now Cold just going to keep trading onto Selfmade as much as possible. The stun comes run. out. Cold now has to run. It's because uh. of the uh, cannon was on his way down, so yep. Selfmade couldn't stick in that fight. Even though he actually had the damage to trade, um, he didn't want to risk it. So. 
this is really an interesting. I'll come back to your call point in a second, but I just want to break down why this happened. So you'll notice that just below the mid lane, there's this one ward at the entrance to the red buff on SK. Uh, and then also in the tri brush, there's another red ward coming out from OG as well that the Braum has just cleared out. So Origin had full information of where self made was throughout the entirety of the early levels. This meant that Selfmade couldn't really control the bot side and threaten a gank because Origin knew exactly what he was up to and where he was trying to play. So rather than just stick to his bot side, he said, well, you know what? I'm going to go check if my blue buff has been done. Yeah. So he then makes his way back up, and it's just an efficient use of his time where he ends up getting all three buffs, and now he has a level advantage over Cole. And he even has the extra Razor Beaks, the extra Scuttle Crabs, uh, the extra Krug, sorry, and the extra Grump. You know, Cole's jungle is pretty much cleared out. His Razor Beaks have just respawned, but didn't really have anything he could do for... Probably about 30 seconds. And this really sucks for a Kane as well, because he's actually quite mana dependent in the early levels. He spams that Q, it costs quite a lot, which means that it then gets much harder to be impactful in the early game. And the thing about Kane is his base stats are very weak, and so he's not really a high impact ganking jungler in the early game. Um, Ideally, you want to be invading in the enemy jungle, stealing away some of those camps, maybe getting a couple trades in with the enemy jungler, and then using your mobility to stay, stay, uh, stay safe. Yeah. Um, but so far, Selfmade has had the better of him, and uh, I like what Selfmade has done. How far he seems to have the better of Whirlup in the top lane for the moment, about 19 CS up or so. Has that Kleptomancy again on the cannon, so he'll be pocketing bank, as you say, in the UK. About seven, 700 Wow. Points. Almost about to say 7,000. 700 gold. Yeah, that's very significant this early on into the game. Uh, the reason why this happens is because Vladimir, his wave clear is very weak in the early game, and the only time he can really change is when you can see that empowered Q is up and available, whereas Alfari can just keep hitting you, keep hitting you, keep hitting you, and fall to out of lane. Now, this matchup does get better as the lane progresses, uh, but in the early stages, it's extremely rush and, uh, rough, and Alfari is leveraging that uh, as much as possible. The good thing for Whirlup is he can go towards something like the Spirit Passage to mitigate some of that, gets extra healing, gets some magic resist, gets the cooldown reduction as well on the Vladimir, which is so vital. As soon as you can start out sustaining the consistent poke that Alfari will put down, that's when the lane really goes in your favor. Now, Selfmade with a level advantage, hasn't ganked top yet. We are five and a half minutes into the game, so would have expected it by now, but instead waiting to get towards that level six. Cold secures his own Gromp, and the junglers meet once again, but not too much is happening. Teleport used by Crownshot to get back into the lane. He has the Sheen first, not completed the tier on that Ezreal yet. So remember that, uh, ooh, gank in mid. Nuketuck puts down the wind wall, pulled back by the chains, though, self-made looking for the chase. Nuketuck will just chuck out that Steel Tempest tornado. So remember, if you're playing Callista, your goal is to win the two versus two, right? Now, he is behind in farm. Uh, he's also behind in gold. Now, I will give them a, that around level 6, maybe that kill threat will increase. I haven't seen Callista in a long time. She's had a lot of changes since we've last seen her in competitive play. So I'm not going to pretend that I am a well-versed expert on Callista. But what I do know is that typically, if you pick her, it's to win the lane and then to transition into a strong mid-game. And you already talked about her base stats were buffed. That should make her even stronger in the early game. But so far... Uh, SK have been playing very defensive, they've been farming from a safe distance, and they're actually ahead in terms of farming. Because of the Kleptomancy, Crown Shot's even further ahead in terms of gold. I think the difficulty as well is, like, how do you actually play aggressively in this lane, right? Yeah. If you jump on the Braum, he puts up the Unbreakable. You don't really get that much damage down, even though you get some Ren stacks in the end. If you jump on the Ezreal, he jumps away. So you can't really get that chase off. I agree with you. Level 6 is probably where we'll see Patrick and Mithy try to be a little bit more aggressive, but... I do need to do something. Here we go. Jump on the Ezreal. He still has the E to get away. Mithy's going to take some damage in response. Dreams puts up the wall. And it ends up being a relatively even trade. Yeah. Relatively even. Dreams can just jump back to safety. But we need to see more of this from the OG bot lane. You know, we had question marks in the draft about whether or not uh, what the goal of this duo was. They picked it pretty early. You know, it was in the first rotation. Um, and they need to make it work. But on the bright side for them, they do still have Alfari dominating in the top side of the map. Definitely a much better laning phase compared to what we've seen from him over the last two weeks. And he's really putting the pressure onto Wurlib. Not only is he getting a lot of Kleptomancy stacks, but he's already taken down a turret plate as well. So he's farming up uh, very nicely. He's on his way to a second. As you can see, almost 8,000 gold lead, about 900 or so in that top lane. Now that we've started to see, you know, the level sixes come out on these junglers as well, I expect maybe a gank or two to occur. Self-made with the Glacial Prison has shown us how effective he can be on this Sejuani. You just have to remember back to the Fnatic game on day one, the first game of the LEC, to think about how much he can do on this champion. It's an interesting animation. 
that pig walk in. Why? Because I, I, I'm not sure how pigs walk usually, but I expected more of like a side-to-side -side waddle than a straight line flubber. That's right. what I'm going to call it. Wait, that. you call... <laughs> Wait. That's a flubber. No, yeah, it's not. That is it's that's one foot in front of the other. Nah, that's a flubber. Oh, he's ganking top! Oh, he's ganking top! <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Clean out water. Ben, you got me excited for a yeah, second. Yeah, but I was going to say, this is the classic self-made. This is what we always he see didn't from actually him. Gank, he just but, I mean, he came top. Okay. And ooh, the laugh. Gank that minion. Oh, actually, he jumps on top of the lightning rush. Okay. That's down. You've still got Glacial Prison. You can flash I say, Glacial I Prison. I thought he would Glacial Prison that, but he's not going to. No. All right, fair they enough. They don't know where Cold is, so maybe just respecting the fact that if Alfari is going to lightning rush straight in our face, would he do that without his jungler being nearby? Maybe, maybe. Oh, but he's still hanging around. He is committed yeah. to, I will get my top laner a kill early. Just try and mitigate some of the bleeding up towards the top side. Here we go. Glacial Great Prison old. connects with the stun. Locks up Barry down. The Hema Plague has popped. And that is first blood. And once again, Selfway goes top and gets a kill. Cold flashes in. Looking for Whirlip. No flash on the Vladimir. Umbral Trespass is enough to get the kill. And Cold can continue to trade. Stunned up as Selfmade has the flash. Will be able to get away. Instead, trading and he jumps in. Oh, the Red Buff! He ganked top, he got two, and SK come out on top. Selfmade, the MVP of SK, plays that beautifully. He lands another fantastic ultimate onto Alfari. He then gets a 1v1 kill against Cold, and we do have a brief pause. It has come out from the OG side. We will get more information to you once we have it. But, oh, in the meantime, I hope we get a replay of this SK play towards the top side of the map because self-made, you know, we, we joke about it. We say every single game, self-made comes top. He tries to gank for Whirlip. Now, usually it's a little earlier in the game, but he still came this time around. Now, gank for a Vladimir is great. You know, you want to try and put that cannon behind. You want to try and make the laning phase a little bit easier for the Vladimir. But... The fact that he just committed, he had the, the vision up towards the top side of the map. He had everything in his control, and then he's like, all right, this guy laughed at us. We will not tolerate that. We will secure this die. Well, let's have another look at it, because it is an Alienware big play. How powerful Selfmade is when he gets one of his signature picks. We're going to have a look at that Sejuani gank towards the top lane. I was told. Are we, Medic? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, hear, I hear voices in my ear, and I'm not sure. Sometimes they're producers. Can't always trust the voices. Could just be me talking to myself. There we are. Let's have a look. Okay, so here we are. So he's sitting on the control ward. Alfari did just use the E. He cannot see self-made right now oh. until it's too late. And then self-made lands a clutch ultimate. Whirlip can easily dive. Now, the problem for Whirlip here is his W is still on cooldown. So he doesn't have that available to him. That means that Cold can drop the full combo, get the execute. And the mistake that Cold made was trying to 1v1 a Sejuani. And uh, in the early game, Selfmade has a surprising oh. amount of damage with the red buff and the E as well. He even hides the Q animation within the flash. That, yeah. that was uh, pretty... And, and... Yeah, he held the wave. Afterwards. He held the wave. So that's actually pushing towards his top laner too. Selfmade. Man, this guy, mm -hmm. this rookie joining the league. He made a fantastic performance in week one. Uh, he's continued to be the staple of this team moving into week three. And you'll be happy to hear, audience, that the pause has been lifted. Yes, it has. Uh, there were reports from Mithy that he was experiencing some lag. We are now back into the game, so I'm sure that has been rectified and sorted. And speaking of Mithy, that bot lane has hit that level six. We wonder if they're going to make something proactive well, happen see. down towards there. They're about eight or nine CS down to a Collector Marty Ezreal, who's now got the tier stacking up, building towards that man and moon. Looks like Blade of the Ruin King is going to be the first completed item on Patrick as well. But you've always got to look at the gold in this capacity, and. Uh, even though the bot lane looks relatively even, you can actually see that there's a 200 gold advantage towards the Ezreal. That means he has the Sheen, the Pickaxe, and the Tear all completed. And that's like the best case scenario for the Ezreal. Yep. Remember, he's going to keep scaling with these AP builds that we're seeing now more and more on the Ezreal. His late game damage is way stronger than yep. it used to be. Oh, when you say AP build, you mean Tear? into Mura Mana, into Iceborne Gauntlet, or Trinity Force, into the Seraphs. Yeah, the and even yeah. from Attila, we saw sometimes coming out the Sorcerer's Boots. Uh, in the late game, I think he was even building things like a Gunblade as yeah. well. So, like, there's just a lot of AP intertwined in yeah. a lot of aspects. And it's kind of a hybrid build. Yeah, some of the variations you also see is, um, you will sometimes see the, what do you call it, the Iceborne Gauntlet. Yeah. Uh, so there's, like, a lot of variations in Ezreal builds, but the one most common to me is uh, Blade of the Ruin King. You also see... Uh, the Mana Mune. Mana Mune. I spawn and then the Gauntlet. Archangels. And then the Archangels, yes. yeah. Depends what you want to do. Cold's come up towards the top side here. I think he was spotted on a ward as he came across. Trying to sneak around, but there's a pink ward in that bush. Here we go. Looking for the fight. On to Whirlip. 
has got the Sanguine Pool, goes down, Hemo Plague only hits onto Alfari, there's the Unborn Trespass as well, but the health regeneration on Wordup's quite a lot, they do a good job of tower diving, Cold is not healthy enough to survive though, and Wordup gets a one for one. Really unfortunate that Wordup was only able to land his ultimate onto Alfari there, if he'd gone there onto Cold, he would have had a bigger heal, that might have given him enough survivability, and then the duo of uh, Origin would have actually been able to set up that dive. Um, so small misplay there from Wordup, but still ends up trading one for one. Uh, and it will allow SK to get themselves a drink, but again, more gold goes into the pocket of Alfari. He'll take himself another turret plate and go back to base. I think as well, Cold shown his intention for this game. It's gank top, it's gank top often, and try and get Alfari ahead by doing things like this. He was spotted on a ward twice before he got there. So again, so you can just see the ultimate just misses Cold, and you can see how much of a healing would have actually gets from both his Q and the ultimate. And if he'd just gone that extra bit of HP, it might have been enough, but... Unfortunately, it wasn't. Still, one for one. Overall, great trade for Warlib. And again, I, I'm a little concerned for Origin, just because playing towards the top side, I don't think they need to. Alfari's already doing very well. He's winning this 1v1. He's building up a big gold lead. And right now, the gold advantage that OG is sitting on comes from the top lane. That's about a 1,000 gold advantage that Alfari has in his back pocket. So trying to snowball that, I don't think is as valuable as actually trying to get your Callista and Alistair ahead. I mean, that makes sense to me, especially since we talked about it in Pick and Ban. We want to see them win the lane. We want to see them win top lane and bot lane. And at yes. the moment, they're only winning top lane. They need to do something down towards the bottom lane, you feel. Maybe there's something about the Callista that we have not anticipated, that Perhaps. we don't know, that Origin have planned for, but... So that's why uh, I'm kind of yeah. re reserving my judgment. Yeah. We're slightly now. reticent about saying this is entirely wrong from Origin. Yes. I think our concern I'm, is... I'm skeptical. We it's... have seen Origin play this style before, not make big leads off lanes they should have made big leads, and then lose because they just die too much and lose team fights later on in the game. It's true. So that is the concern if you're an Origin fan right now. And SK have this team fighting composition. They have all of the strength they need to win team fights pretty well at that 2-3 well, I think item we're going to see a team fight right now, man. Yeah, Mithy. Not going to be pulled in by the Infernal Chains. Doesn't land the knockoff. There he goes in with the flash. Patrick coming in from the side as well. Oh. Oh. Straight onto the Callisto. Once again, self-made finds its mark. That prison is a homing beacon for the backline. And three members of Origin fall in a heartbeat. Self-made is just insane. This man has like homing ultimate on Sejuani. By far one of the best, if not the best Sejuani player we have here in Europe. This guy just so, I think, so I think good. we need to name it something, because it's like the slide and glide, right? Like, he, he slides in, he chucks it in, like, round the corner. He almost bends the bullet of the Glacial Prison it's every like, single time. What about the uh, the Glacial Maid, or, I don't know, we got to get, his name has got to be in there. Okay. Like, consistently, he lands them, but self-made is a difficult name. To yeah, use it's really the... tough. <laughs> and the last time we named something after an EU player, they took it out of the game. <laughs> Wait, what was that? The Tom Kench save. You can no, oh, long, yeah, you can no save. longer save someone. That's true, that's very, very true. It's a shame. All right, so we'll let him think of the name at some point. Yeah, yeah. but uh, think of it at home, guys, because people online are very creative when it comes to that's that. true. That's true. So maybe uh, the fans at home can come up with something. But definitely, again, the point is to reinforce how good self-made is at Sage Wani, right? And we talked about it at the beginning of the game, which is that when stuff happens for SK, it happens off the back of him. And this all starts because they're invading on the red buff. They have push on the top, which means that Wordup can get hit first. And while Ezreal isn't there. They still feel confident because it's actually a 4v3 before Yasuo can get involved. And because of Selfmade landing that ulti onto Patrick and him not being able to do any damage in the fight, he couldn't even use any of his summoner spells. It means that SK immediately converted into a big numbers game and they win the fight. So now they're 6 to 3 in kills. That's a pretty hefty gold lead they've got. Yeah, 15 minutes in. They, well, it's about 400 at the moment, Vedius. But remember that it's Alfari who has yeah. the gold lead. And if you, um, if you remember, if you kind of look at the deficits everywhere else, mid has an advantage. Yep. Now for Pyrian. Bot lane has a big advantage for Crown Shot and the jungle as well, advantage for self made. So even though the gold looks close, SK actually have bigger advantages elsewhere on the board. 15 minutes in, here's the transformation, and unsurprisingly, it's Rusk. We are playing competitive play. Don't usually see the Shadow Assassin. As Daniel Dracos likes to say, this is when he becomes a champion. Uh, he now has way more crowd control, he's a lot more relevant in the game, he's very impactful, and uh, I definitely think that he is. Um, He's much more of a nuisance, especially yeah. once he completes that Black Cleaver because of all the extra sustain that he gets from his build. Dracos, of course, our resident Kane main amongst the EU Shoutcaster team. Rift used mid, and this should be a pretty easy take for SK. They'll open up the first turret of the game. 
There it goes. 2,000 gold lead now for them. They have accelerated off that team fight win. They can continue to push, but really, I wish you haven't responded to this at all. They're going to get another charge out of it. Alfari decides to stay up top. Doesn't have the teleport, so he can't join the fight. Selfish is going to dive underneath the tower. Hits cold and mid as well, but already that tower's very low. Here is a lot of damage coming out from Nuke Duck. The last man, not enough to knock down one. The world ender keeps alive, period, for the moment. Nuke Duck on that back line takes out one, but he's going to get stunned up. He's down. Tower falls as well. Selfish dodges away to the side, but Patrick is here. Finally joins the fight. That's one for him. Maybe this is the fight that gets Patrick back in the game. Gets period. That's two. Looking for the triple. The channel comes out. Patrick's so low. Kai's shot there as well. It's a triple. And Patrick gets away. Great fight for Origin. They find SK out of position. SK dive underneath the tower, and Origin are finally able to punish. It ends up being a one for three in favor of OG, and Patrick secures all the kills. The Callista is now much better set up for success. And SK, they just Ooh. get a little too overzealous. Patrick's like, okay, I'll come in. Maybe Callista not the best in lane anymore. Maybe Callista couldn't get that level six that we wanted. But if you're going to feed me three kills underneath the tower, I will take that gladly. Now, Infernal Drake on the cards for Origin with their first of the game. But look at how that gold's evened out, Vedius. A second ago, a minute ago, I was saying 2,000 gold lead for SK. Now it's even out. And the big thing we have to look at is that ADK position after this fight. So the dive happens because they think they can just blow up Nuke Duck, but Mithy and Cold are just right behind them. So now SK are a little divided in what they want to do. Wurlit isn't able to get any damage off because of how well Mithy zones him from the fight. And Cold just buys plenty of time because of what he's able to do on the Rust. So then Patrick joins the end of the fight when everyone is super low health on the side of SK and he can just clean up. Uh, patient play from the side of Mithy means that he saves the ultimate till the very end. You think Crown Shot can maybe clean things up, but he doesn't want to overcommit. And remember that Afari wasn't even in this fight. He didn't have the teleport. He didn't. Uh, he couldn't really join, so he secures a top lane tower. SK get a tier two in the mid lane. And again, the game still stays relatively even. So now we look at Patrick. We look at him to be the big carry in this mid game state. You and he's to. even picked himself up a QSS. Yeah, that's interesting though, because it does delay his damage. You look at the Ezreal, he's got Mana Mune stacking up towards that Mewa Mana and the Iceborne Gauntlet. It's a two item Ezreal. Patrick's sitting at one items. And I mean, Cold's not even got his Black Cleaver yet. You only have one item complete on Alfari. You just need a little bit more if you're Origin at the moment. You're a little bit too far behind to really take any full on skirmish. And a team fight is probably going to be devastating for you. Yeah. Uh, SK, this is where SK thrive though, when they have the lead, when they are in control of the map. That's when we see them look their strongest, look the most comfortable and confident. Uh, and that's where they rely on the synergy that they have with the, the three of the five former Mad Lions players. And yeah. They look very good right now, as you mentioned. Two items being completed across the board. Vladimir has finished the Spellbinder and the Proto Belt. He's doing a good job of trying to keep up with Alfari, who still sits with a gold lead, but definitely smaller than what it was before. Only about 600 now. And Nuke Duck's still scaling up. You've got to remember yep. that the Yasuo is still very strong in the late game. And something that we never really talked about this game is the synergy between... Ooh, never mind, don't have time. Fight synergy the between Alfari and Cold. He will play gone to Alfari. There's a lot of damage coming out from Whirlib. The Sanguine Pool will heal him up in just a second, but Alfari flashes away. And now Whirlib shouldn't be long for the Summoner's Rift. Knocked up by Rast and taken out by Alfari. Yeah, a little overextended there from Whirlib. He didn't have any vision in the bot side of the jungle. He didn't have his jungler to help defend him, so he ends up getting killed. But he did force the flash out from Alfari, and you can see that uh, this Vladimir is getting to a point where he can pretty much handle the cannon now. And if cannon doesn't get that assistance, then he starts to lose out on those 1v1s. I do like the itemization from Alfari to try and deal with it a little bit, though. Gone for that Morello Nomicon, gets you the Grievous Wounds, which stops Vladimir from getting as much healing, perhaps, as he usually would. It's not too uncommon, but always good to see people itemizing situationally. So, uh, yeah, Wurlip thinks he can go for this trade because he dodges out some of the damage from Alfari. Cold does miss the W, which means that if it had landed, he might have actually just gotten the kill onto Wurlip, which ends up forcing the flash out from Cold. So, a bit of a mechanical misplay there from Cold, but at the end, they have enough damage to secure the kill, and they find it onto Wurlip. So, if you want uh, League in speedy mode, that's what it looks like for a second. I, I thought we were watching Earth, but we're not. We are watching normal League of Legends, although more action packed a game than we usually see from Origin. Usually by this point they've died about five times, but they've got one kill. Here they have eight, and only died seven times, which is a big improvement for them, and now that you have the Infinity Edge on Nuke Duck, I expect to see him going to a side lane, uh, trying to apply some pressure on other portions of the map. Yeah, ooh, he's actually gone for the Infinity Edge second. Uh, normally we see it as a third item, yeah. something like the Sterax, or maybe a Magic Resist item will come in uh, second. Um, I guess if he's not playing into Whirlib, doesn't really need the magic resist. I can see yeah. the Starak still working out well, though. 
a little bit more tanky if you get caught. I mean, it's up fine. Like, I don't think there's anything yeah. innately wrong going for the Infinity Edge second. Um, we'll see what he goes for third, whether he just kind of stacks up on the damage or if he will go for something like the Sarex for a little bit more survivability. Then you can always kind of rely on Nuke Duck to be pretty consistent mm -hmm. when he's uh, playing these carry style champions. But something we didn't mention that I wanted to mention, but we might again not have time for as uh, Nuke Duck gets out to the oh, out. And, and Sarex probably would have helped him, but not for long in that fight. Let's go get the kill. And Pyrian is the one just, to secure it. Just want to say, I don't think Selfmade has missed an ultimate this game. No, he's a god. <laughs> like he is, it's miraculous how he hits them. It's very, very We impressive. do need a name for it, though. Yeah, someone will come up with a name, because we're clearly not creative enough. Dragon will be spawning in about 30 seconds. SK going to get some vision on it. Have their eyes actually set on this bot tier 1. If they can take that one down, definitely a lot more gold in their back pockets. And they're maintaining pressure onto Origin. This is one of the issues that I had with Origin yesterday. They were very afraid to press the go button. I felt like that their composition works really well around Baron, and when they could group up and force Vitality in these 5v5s, then they could find some success, but they were often afraid to actually pull the trigger. And you can very clearly see that self made is not afraid to press R. He will fight you whenever he sees an opportunity. self made slide. The self made slide. Yeah. That's not bad. It's okay. I, th I think we'll do bad. okay. We'll use that for now. Yeah. But yeah, uh, one, one thing as well, the Rift out being taken uh, this early by SK and pushed it up the mid lane has opened up a lot of the map for them, and now Origin are trying to fight them around this Infernal Dragon. Infernal Chase will pull back Mifty, pops the ultimate, Teleport's oh, actually used to the fight, there's Mifty, Alfari oh. pops the slicing match with the pit, but they do get the Infernal. Now, Patrick's pulled them back, the Hemoplanes landed on him and Nuke Duck as SK now advanced through the river, Patrick's still running away, doesn't have that much health, Mifty sacrificed, a cold, Alfari and Nuke Duck need to go away, Selfmade misses one! The Selfmade glides past! Cold, but Cold does land. SK is continuing, the, chase, continuing the push. Tornado comes out. Not sure SK can go any further. So OG walk away with an Infernal Drake and a loss of a single team member. Uh, it did cost Patrick all of his summoner spells, which means that he won't have that same survivability the next time Wurlip dives onto the backline like he did in this fight. But keep your eyes on the setup, right? Because Patrick doesn't actually come in from behind with his team, and he actually takes a bit of chunk damage from Crown Shot right at the beginning of the fight, so he can't really get involved. Alfari then tries to dive onto the backline, both immediately dash out. Now, the bright side is it does secure the Drake, but then Patrick is left by himself, allowing Warlib to just dive on top of him. Great wind wall from Nuke Duck to just buy some time oh. to actually mitigate a lot of the damage that was coming out from SK, which means that the rest of the team can escape, but unfortunately not quite so lucky for me who ends up dropping off the back of the five SK members who are now setting up around the Baron Pit. I'm wondering if Patrick's going towards a Ginsu's Rageblade here. He has a recurve bow and has the pickaxe, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is quite possible. I think it works, I think it works, because uh, once you hit the max stacks, you can then double apply the Ren stacks, right? So I, right, he just built it. So I think we can both agree that he is definitely going towards yes. the Ganges Blade. <laughs> that is his second Blade Arden. Didn't really have much of an impact in the last fight, but perhaps the next one will be his Reckoning. SK setting up around the Baron here, have a little teeny tiny bit of deep vision around the red buff, but is it enough? Cold steps forward. Three players of SK here. Reaping Slash, not going to do too much. So very Blade quickly, Rouge. the synergy that I didn't get to talk about earlier that I want to talk about... Tell me about, about it, Venice. Is the... Because um, every time you start something rast, like this, they fight. So the keep rast, talking, the keep rast talking. They're going to fight in a second. They're going to fight The Rast knock-up with the Yasuo ulti yep. synergize very well. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to actually then get the Yasuo ult onto okay. targets that you want, right? Because the cooldown is also very low. Fate's Call also works with it. Yeah, so that's a lot of setup. It. And here's the fight. You talked about something. The fight starts. Pimian pops the world ender. Goes into the resurrection. Fate's Call pulls him back. Nuke Duck not close enough. Another miss on the Glacial Prison. They catch out Crown Shot. He's going to flash and jump away. So makes it zoning out Nuke Duck towards the top side of this. Uncle Untr Trespass on Crown Shot. That's one down. Arjun find good fight in their own jungle. Now they're going to turn towards the Baron, but can SK fight around it? Will Origin just start it up straight away? They do have the Callista. Still does do bonus damage towards those epic monsters. Massive misplay there for the side of SK. Trying to invade into OG's jungle. Oh, oh wow, oh, they just went golden. That's another big that's misplay. Huge. SK making all these mistakes. Look, he's got flash the flank. He's got flash out. The Mithy here with the flank. Slicing Mountain comes out. They catch out Dreams. Dreams jumps away. Pops a great Glacial Fisher over four. The Hemo play comes out as well. Worms got into the back line. New Tech's low. Last breath. And now he's still alive. The Hemo play didn't do enough work. But that's Nuke down, and now Pyrian having to run away from Patrick. Origin do not pull the trigger on the Baron on the way back. But they do find a number of kills, unfortunately, because the amount of damage that Wurlib did to the entire team of Origin, they could not go back for the main objective. And this is the big misplay here. Pyrian just walking into the enemy jungle, who, when he doesn't have proper support, his waves aren't set up, he doesn't have a good setup 
for the rest of his team to really follow. And then Croucher here by himself. The knockup comes through the ultimate. Mithy immediately punishes him. He loses his flash. He doesn't have heal, and it just means the OG can get a very easy collapse. So big misplay oh. there. Then the word of Sonyas gets used. And imagine if we had that earlier on, or later on in this fight, when Alfari then goes in for the engage. They shut down Dreams, who gets a good ulti here, and then followed up by this four-man ulti. If he'd had this on his buy a little bit more time, maybe, maybe SK could have done something with it. But they only end up getting one kill in exchange for three. But at the very least, SK don't lose the Baron. They do not. 26 minutes in. 300 gold, the difference between these two teams. Basically nothing. You're looking at the key carries, Patrick, Nuke Duck having a good game, Alfari as well, stepping up after we said he'd looked a little bit weak so far in the LEC. Pyrian really standing out on the side of SK, 4-1-3 on that Aatrox. But now your eyes turn towards Crown Shock, who has gone towards that Hextech Gunblade, going for the more burst-heavy AP. Cold going in, Blades reach, lands onto two. Not going to get too much more out of it. Vladimir has no teleport right now, and he's sitting in the bot lane. He has been able to push up the bot side of the map, but Nuke Duck is doing the same on the top side. So while Pyrian catches that, OG have the opportunity to just hold this mid side. Now, this is a big opportunity for SK, because remember, they have the pushing wave bot, and this is something Origin often do. They'll sacrifice that side farm, which means that Alfari will continue to lose XP at the cost of staying grouped up with the rest of his team. That's a big issue, though, because you do start to just fall behind in levels. If we see Whirlup hit 16 before Alfari, that's a massive team fight changing ultimate. Mithy pop the hex flash. Oh, Green oh wing wall on self made. That's really one good ultimate range. down. SK have all the vision around this though. Mithy goes in. There's a slice of matchroom as well. Alfari's jumped up the back line already. Crash was dead. Dreams is not soon to follow. Whirlup chased off by Cold. Really good stuff there from Origin. Made a decisive call. It got the two kills they wanted. Yeah, big fight from the side of Origin. The flash ultimate from Alfari onto a summonless crown shot means that the Ezreal died almost instantly. Selfmade is still alive. Pyrrhon needs to be careful here. He He's popped the world ulti. ender. He just wants to get some damage. And oh, whoa, he gets a lot of damage down onto Patrick. Gonna go into the resurrection. Selfmade here, Whirlup as well, trying to get in, but the wind wall will block him off the moment. Pyrrhon jumps across the wall, and the second. Alfari there with the chase, though, and Pyrrhon is down. And now you have to feel Origin call for the Baron. You have to do it now. Yeah, that was a misplay there from Pyrrhon. He shouldn't have tried to go for that. There was no ulti on Selfmade or Whirlup. They were never gonna win that 3v5. He gives away his life, but Selfmade does still have the flash. He has the spike. Can he get the steal away from Origin? Do you still have the rend from Kalista for the steal here? Crown shot coming in as well. Self made there. Mitty doing that frontline block. Crown shot coming in. Well, it there as well. Nuked up very low. Self made caught off by Mitty on the back line. Baron down to a thousand. Self made flashes in, but Kalista gets it, and that's already one down. Origin have lost a man. They've lost, they've got two though, and this is just clean up crew for Patrick. That's two kills for him. There's the triple. Easy stuff for the Kalista. And Origin finally cement a solid gold lead in this game. It's taken a few scrappy fights, but that's all they needed. Finding that pick onto Crown Shot started this whole snowball in Origin's favor. They found one good fight around the Dragon. They converted it into another big fight around the Baron. And even though the Callista damage to big monsters was nerfed, it's still significant enough to help secure the team the objective. Mithy zone self-made away. Will have doing what he can to get into the thick of things, but he just doesn't have the damage. Self-made cannot secure the steal. And Crown Shot gets knocked up by Cold with this very obnoxious Ross, who's just buying time for Patrick to clean up the backside of the fight. Triple another kill fight, another him. triple kill for Patrick. He's seven, one, and five. Runan's finished, has extra magic resist in his back pocket in the form of the Negatron cloak as well. And a 5,000 gold lead now extended for Origin. Want to see them close this one out. It is very rare that we have seen them in a gold lead at any point in the game. Never mind this late with a composition that seems to be working for. Yes, certainly has. Very, very mobile, a little unconventional but it is certainly working out for the side of Origin. And I think the fact that Alfari's been able to get onto the back line, Patrick has remained unscathed, and also just Nuke Duck's use of the wind wall has been fantastic oh. in mitigating a lot of the engaged damage that SK tried to throw out. Absolutely on point with it. Now we will see the 1-3-1 one, one really start to come to effect from Origin. You put Kennen in the side lane, you put Yasuo in the side lane. No one can really deal with him. Yasuo at three items with a frozen mallet. Kennen at three items as well with the Banshees to keep him. Just that ever, ever so slightly safer. And uh, Pyrian and Whirlip will try to match. But I do not think they will have the easiest of times doing so. Let's see, they're keeping pressure up right now. Iskachi 
holding out in terms of wave kit. They still have this mid tier one up and available. Just means more gold for Origin to take. Looking for a dive onto Crown Shot on Dreams. Just have to force them away. You can use the Hex Flash for that. Never have to go in. You can decide at the last moment where you're going to go. It's not like you commit from the beginning. I mean, to be fair, you've got to acknowledge, right? Uh, you know, we talked a lot about how uh, Callista very much focused around the early to mid game, but with that Rage Blade and with the amount of attack speed she has, she can actually get those Ren stacks up very, very quickly. Uh, and onto a squishy target, like you identified, there's a lot of squishy members onto SK. Um, she can be pretty damn effective, um, especially when she has all this frontline that she can play around. So, is working out for Origin. I was a little skeptical. Right now, it has been a very good pick for Patrick. 7 1 and 5 on the champion. And we wondered if he'd have a game where he could really prove himself. Well, this was the pick that seems to have done it for him so far. Um, obviously, SK still have opportunities to get back into this game, looking at self-made predominantly to make a pick to land that Glacial Prison, but Origin doing it by the numbers now, just rotating around to the side lanes, getting the wave pushing in, and then maybe even looking for an inhibitor here. Mithy uh, stepped a little bit too close to the tower as he channeled that Hex Flash and uh, take, takes a, a chunk of HP. Paul's going to go catch the mid wave. He now has his GA. This is where level 16 Rast is is really strong at this point in the game. You know, we talked about scaling aspects for Origin. The Yasuo and the uh, the Rast are the two champions that I really looked at. And now that they've hit those big item spikes, Patrick even at four items, a whole item ahead of Crown Shot. Uh, actually not going for the double tier build, which does surprise me because I feel like that's where you get a lot. Well, he hasn't completed it yet, but he, with the Lost Chapter, it looks like he's working towards it. But coming out very late into the game. And uh, it means that Origin should have a lot more damage at this point in time. Yeah. I do like the adaptation not to go for Blade of the Ruin King in this game, though. He doesn't really have too many tanks he needs to work through on the enemy. Sure. So uh, don't really need that percentage HP damage that you get from the Blade. Instead, going Hex and Gunblade for a little bit more burst. And for a bit of escapability if you uh, jump in and need that uh, little slow from the Gunblade. But the question is, can Origin close with a 7,000 gold lead? Because we've never seen them in this position. They have won one game. It was against Fnatic. SK have won two. They won one against Fnatic and one against XL last week but it's it's almost as if i don't want i don't want to hope <laughs> in origin i know you had a you had a speech last week about how origin had let you down we saw a quick shot at the start of ready check saying you know deficios let me down well, I think for many fans had high expectations of them, uh, but I think they're prime, they, they should be in a great position to be able to close out this game. Uh, they'll be waiting for the next Baron to spawn. As I said, I think that Crown Shot's way off completing that fourth item. Uh, and I, I think that Vladimir is the scariest factor on SK's team composition right now. If Crown Shot can land some good poke, then maybe SK can set up for a nice fight, but I'm, st I'm just very scared of this Nuke Duck uh, cold duo of the, the Rost and the Yasuo. I think it's very, very difficult to deal with. I can understand your fear. SK seems to understand it as well. They're backing off. They're letting Origin get a little bit more jungle pressure. Uh, Self-made and Dreams were waiting in the bush for a moment, but the Sentinel will spot out Self-made. Oh, dodges around it. Don't know he's there yet. Four members of Origin now down towards the bottom side. Crown shot not here for SK. Self-made trying to come in from the flank. Hold there in the wall. Shadow stepping his way. Gets the blade to reach. Knock up onto Dreams. Crown shot get a little bit of damage off. Uh, Farming actually maybe caught out a little bit here. Dodges away, flashed away from the Glacial Prison. Don't think we count that one as a miss. That was a dodge. Yeah, fair. But Crown Shot actually can just continue to chip away here. With the Iceborne Gauntlet, he does get those slows off. And SK relieve the pressure for now. So they keep their bot and mid tower alive. The Baron has just spawned and ultimates are all available for Origin except for the flash from Alfari, except for self-made, which means that primary engage tool from SK is gone. So this might give Origin the window to just force this Baron, because they know that SK are not going to find an easy fight. What have you got? You've got Flash Hemoplate. You've got World Ender still available on Pyrian. You've got the Glacial Fisher. You've got Cold stealing away a blue buff. Level 17 now on the Ross. Definitely scary. Joint highest level in the game. Oh, no, wait. Alfari and Nuke Ducker, 18. Yep. No one on SK, 18 yet. Still no 16 for self-made either, so it doesn't have the upgrade on that ultimate. Now, the rest of Origin are actually going back to base. SK might not know this, or well, they obviously don't know this, because I thought they could have tried to rush down the Elder. They know they're not a Baron. That's the important thing for them at the moment. Yeah, I'm surprised Origin didn't actually clear that one out, uh, given that they just had control over the river. Good damage coming out from Crown Shot there. But yeah, with both Elder and Baron alive, this makes the decision-making process a little harder for both teams. Typically, you want the Baron because it's easier to siege with, whereas the Elder Dragon offers you a lot more teamfight value. 
Here we are. Ooh, Dreams. Dreams. Gonna stumble into cold. Straight into cold. TP comes in straight behind them as well. Looks like Origin just won the fight. Alfari there. Crown shot maybe a bit out of position already. We see Dreams go down and the fight out on the top side is huge as well. Patrick just opening up onto Wurlum. Hemo play comes out. There's the stopwatch as well. It's a double kill for Alfari. Crown shot's dead. Patrick's cleaning up on the other side as well. This is too easy for Origin. They take down everyone but Pyrian and they can turn their eyes straight towards the Baron. Yeah, Origin just melt through SK here. I doubted the late game damage, but again, it was. Uh, the cannon with the death camp completed. The fact that it split off into small skirmishes, you showcase the power of this Rast in the late game. And Origin, they don't even care about the Baron. They want to try and break into the base of SK. There are three members dead, 20 second plus death timers. Origin looking to get their second win of the, of the split. They might even just be able to close it out here. Inhibits down. Have a lot of damage from the Yasuo, from the Callista, and from the Ken and Origin. Looking for that second win. Pyrian trying to stop them in their tracks. Last breath comes out. Pyrian's pop the world ender. Continues to claim out that minion wave, which is important. Here's Dreams as well. So eight seconds before Crown Shot comes up. Resurrection on Pyrian. Bill ready the second Nexus Tower, the target for Patrick. He will take down Dreams. The second Nexus Tower follows. And finally, Origin will get their second win in the LEC. It was definitely a close game for a very long time. That linchpin moment was definitely when Crown Shot got caught out in the enemy jungle. Him losing his summoner spells meant the Origin had a very easy target to dive onto in the following team fights. Alfari got onto him pretty consistently, and we saw some great win walls as well coming out oh, from Duke Tuck in the mid lane. I felt like that. The individual members of Origin definitely played better today. Patrick's positioning in team fights was, was definitely improved upon. Perhaps outside of that single dragon fight where he couldn't really get involved much, I feel like he was very solid. And while I was skeptical of their draft, it was clearly something that they came in prepared with. They made it work for themselves, uh, and they ended up picking themselves up a win. Definitely did it. I think you have to give credit to Alfari as well in the top lane. We talked at the start of the game about how he was struggling a little bit, how he hadn't been the Alfari we've seen of old, but this game, it's a favorable matchup, we have to say. The cannon into Vladimir, he still did a pretty good job of shutting down the enemy top laner. Whirlib, unable to have as much of an impact in those team fights, and SK never really able to get to the team fights that they wanted. Yeah, for sure. Uh, game was fun, though. It was, was definitely fun. back and forth. A lot of kills happened. Got to see a Kalista come out back into pro play. Uh, also got to see a Kane, a hard one the yeah. LEC. Uh, so that was cool. But I also think, like, self-made man, what a, what a performance from him. Yep. His yeah. early game is still impeccable. Very, very good. Yep. And I think that he showcased that he's definitely one of the uh, top junglers that we have here in Europe. Love his decision-making. think he's very smart. I think he always looks to punish where he can. I think he has a strange obsession with ganking top lane. But he makes it work every game. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, this game, he had that one gang top lane where he got two kills. Yes. A kill and assist, and then he yes, went bot yes. for the rest of the game. So, you, yeah, sometimes you just have to gank top. It's kind of like his, it's his due diligence for being in the game. Yep. Like, this is your what you have to pay. This is the toll. You have to give me one gank top, and then after that, you can do what you want. I think SK shouldn't be too dismayed. Uh, obviously, there's a few things they want to work on: positioning, not getting caught out, maybe trying to work out exactly where the mistakes came around that infernal dragon as well, because they shouldn't have lost that. Really, felt like they forced it a little bit too preemptively. But still, good stuff for Origin. Question is, is this the beginning of their trajectory upwards? Or was this just a happy blip on yeah. their road throughout the first half of the split? They're currently sitting at 2 and 4. Uh, I believe that's right. Yep. And then SK, SK 2 and 4. Yeah, SK 2 so and 4 as well. Got SK down there near the bottom. You've got XL there as well. Are they at o 3 and 3 right now? Oh, they... XL, they lost today, didn't they? Ah, yes. So they're 2 and 4. Yes, two yes, yes. So we've got a couple of teams at two and four, so the, we are getting a bit of separation now in the standings across the league. I think we have kind of a defined top five in Misfits, G2, Schalke, Splice and Vitality. Yeah. And then underneath that, you're looking at your Origins, your XLs, your SKs of the world. And underneath that, at the moment, you're looking at your Fanatics and your Rogues, of course. Yeah, that's so. true. Very, very true. And uh, I believe Vitality will be playing up next against Rogues. We'll see if they stand a chance. But again, kind of looking at this whole game in, uh, in, in its totality, uh, we see... Self-made once again, demonstrating that he's a very strong early game jungler. He's kind of the core part of what enables SK to succeed. Yeah. Um, the mid game is still where they sometimes have a couple of issues. They tried to set up deep vision and they got punished for it. Mm -hmm. And then Origin showcasing that they do still have the ability to fight these late game team fights yeah. and that they can punish the mistakes. It's just, it's taken them a while to get to this point. But, uh, and I think we also saw some semblance of them actually pulling the trigger, being a little bit more decisive yes. this time around. I, I definitely agree with that. I also want to say that if you guys 
know who your player of the game is, you should jump on over to at LOL Esports because you can vote for Alfari, Nukeduck, or Patrick, who are looking to become that player of the game. Uh, mm, mm, mm. I think Cole deserves an honorable mention yeah. in the late game team fights, but Alfari was definitely it for me. Yeah. I think he had a really solid laning phase. He translated that very effectively into the team fights, and the fact that he got onto Crown Shot and killed him in literally every fight towards the end of the game, yeah. I think was what allowed them to win. Well, to learn more from Origins win, let's have a talk with Law and their jungler. Thank you very much, guys, and thank you for joining me after this win. Congratulations on this thank one. Thank you, thank you. What worked this time? Uh, what worked? I think uh, we just played a composition that we, we have played in, in practice. And uh, actually, to be completely honest, I think most of our drafts, we, we have a good plan, but we just did a lot of individual mistakes in the games. And then we looked like a shit team. And sometimes that's the case. Uh, but I think today we showed a little bit of more what we can do. Um, the start obviously hasn't been great for us because we, we expected way more of ourselves. So uh, I'm just happy we get a win. And I think all of us really needed a, a win to kind of get back on track. I agree on this one. Uh, one question about the game, though. You got your blue buff stolen at level three. Did you expect Selfmade to be here? And how did it impact your game in the end? Uh, I mean, actually, I had no clue he took my blue off level one. So when I when I realized uh, in the moment, I was like, "What the fuck happened?" You know, like uh, I, I I didn't know. So yeah, sorry. Uh, so yeah. No one uh, understood. It's okay. So <laughs> I, I mean, I'm kind of blaming my bot lane. I don't know how the how how the, he could start on my blue buff without me knowing. Uh, we'll have to watch the replay. Uh, we'll we'll watch later. But yeah, little surprised. Uh, but. It, it's, it went well after all. Well, that was a good victory after all. I mean, does it mean you guys are back on track after this one? Uh, we are definitely uh, on a better track than we were yesterday, so that, that's a good start. But um, right now, we, we obviously have some weaknesses that are shown in the games. Uh, we do some mistakes that usually we would never do, and we are maybe not as aggressive as some of the other teams, but we are trying to figure out what we are good at and what we want to do, and uh, for us it just is a little bit slower than some of the other teams, but I have a lot of faith in our team. We, we have super good players, and I know we will get there so at some times, uh, at some point in this, uh, in this split, and so it will just come eventually. I think all of us know that it will happen like that. As long as you have confidence, you're heading to the right direction. Thank you for joining me. Right, they're being loud. No worries, no worries. And we're going to toss it to post game with Trevor. Take it away. What the f where's my blue buff? Um, no, of course, uh, we will talk about it in just a moment or two. Uh, I do want to introduce uh, Dracos as the resident Kanye Kane, Kane expert. Yeah, Kanye uh, too. Because you, you are, are a Kanye. lot of Kane. <laughs> and you are a little bit of a Kane. I mean, you are a Kane one trick. Yeah, so I'm I mean, a, I'm, you suck at everything else. Uh, it's true. Uh, I one trick this champion for a couple hundred games, and I have very strong opinions on how it functions in pro play. The I've TL never seen you so animated I, about I, a single champion. I really champion. care a lot okay, give me about sweeping, the sweeping stems of the entire game, and then we'll break it down play by play. Okay. Okay, so first off, uh, Cold had one of probably the worst early games you can possibly have is, is Kane. He was absolutely out jungled by Self Made. The level three blue buff is the most important part, and as we look back on it, the reality is Cold doesn't know that Self Made is going here. Self Made contesting this ruins Cold's entire early jungle path. Kane is not a good duelist early game. His biggest strength is his mobility and his ability to sneak in and steal jungle camps. He's an incredible counter jungler, really trash duelist. So Self Made taking camps away and getting a big lead is crucial here. This play. Well, it does look awkward is another important thing to note about Kane. Kane, unlike other scaling junglers and options, has to fight to get his transformation. So the fact that he, for all intents and purposes, runs it down in a couple plays like this, you saw in an earlier top lane play as well, those two plays back to back actually give him Shadow Assassin. Now that does put him in an awkward spot because he has to wait four minutes to get Rost because if you go Shadow Assassin, you're trolling. Uh, Rost is insane, it's broken. Shadow Assassin, very bad. I, I believe the quote was, "Is Kane is 70% of a champion, Ross is 1.5. Uh, yeah, Ross is, Ross is busted. So he has to exist in this horrible early game state where he just farms and waits for these plays. But the, really the reality is, is that the reason that Cold got to look so good in those late game plays is because Alfari was so dominant in lane that he let him set up some of those dive plays, that he let him move up there and kind of take some of his laning advantage and his strength and put it into the Kane. Overall, not a great Kane performance, but the reality is if you get through the early to mid game, even and Rost comes online, the champion is unstoppable. And that's what I like. It's kind of like that power play that you were talking about. The fact that you're against SK, they are seemingly a more patient or slower team. It's all about their jungler. And it almost felt like a bet. Like, 
we can actually play Kane in this matchup because we will reach Rost and be able to outmaneuver them in the team fights. I mean, it's one of those things like a bet or a gamble is one way of looking at it, but it's also it's a way of interpreting your opponent's strengths and weaknesses and playing into them. I want to give some kudos to Selfmade. He figured out a different direction. He read a different map for a change. Did not necessarily camp top lane over and over and over like we've seen many, many times. Uh, we do actually have another replay of uh, uh, another team fight playing out a little bit later in the game where Patrick starts to, to pop off. And this is, it ends up being a triple kill for the Callista. But talk me through not only the SK engage, but the OG counter. And it's also the fact that at this point, Cold has the Ross, and he's also going to do a lot of damage and a lot of work into this team fight. Um, but like you said, the big benefactor is the fact that Callista picks up the triple. I think he also picks up a double close to this, because by the end of the day, Patrick was hitting really hard and ahead of clock, and a champion that would normally fall off on her damage output uh, was pretty much right on time to actually be a significant factor in this game for much longer than we're used to seeing Callista. Yeah, especially when you can see Crown Shot was not with the team when they were pushing. The reason I highlight that, Crown Shot missed a fair number of team fights. Did not have the impact that was expected of him to be competitive with Origin yeah, this soft, game. Yeah, soft statements. Uh, he was trying to find the right And to be fair to him, it was definitely a rough game from the Ezreal, and uh, particularly the last team fight was the most glaring issue. You can go back and watch it on the bot if you want, but he he ease in aggressively into a Ross. Instantly dies. And you die, instantly, and that's the reality. Is that, that was around the Raptor camp, right? Yes, you, so you, yeah. the thing about the Iceborne Gauntlet and that Ezreal build is that it's actually very hard for Kane to get on top of you without the movement speed steroid. So you right. are actually safe as long as you don't come to him but the second you leap into his range the cooldown on that reaping slash is so low that he just sticks on top of you sticks on top of you and if you try to e out once he's on top of you he uses the ulti he follows you and you're dead also different iterations of the uh, of the build going for the gun blade as opposed to having the double tier that late in the game it was like 35 minutes and he didn't have the double tier stacked up i believe was maybe starting to build it yeah he had the lost chapter like he was going to go yeah. for the build but you, the tier is the more important uh, important component and Ross there. was like so unkillable by this point anyway uh, listen we do have one more baron for, uh, one more replay. It is at the Baron, uh, and this is uh, Origin picking that one out. And it's just, it, it just, there was more icing on the cake the later this game went. And Origin just seemed to accelerate the tempo, despite was a pretty close opening. And all credit to Nuketuck and those wind walls. They were game changing as the fight broke out. And it worked so well against a lot of the damage and the composition that. Uh SK had put together. When you think about the Sejuani ultimate, the Ezreal ultimate, if Yasuo was ever grouped up for those team fights, he was constantly denying so much damage. Because the only way that SK had into that is they thrown out their line skill shots, and then hopefully the Hemo Plague is amplifying all of that damage. And it felt like SK never got that massive damage nuke. And so from there, the sustained damage from Origins Comp would just one out in the day. And really, the, the, the Kane story is a very small piece of this game overall. The bigger story is how OG played around Patrick and how they protected this guy and how it never felt like SK could shut that damage threat down because Callista makes tanks look stupid. She yep. da she dashes around a <laughs> Sejuani. You feel like an idiot when you play against that champion. Yeah. And we saw it that once Origin had any form of momentum and Callista got to free hit, uh, the game was just over. Well, very competitive, very fun to watch, uh, especially with the Kane interactions, early game into late game. <laughs> Thank you very much for that one, Dracos.